What if I told you that 99% of people don't understand how condos actually work and that if you knew all the things I'm going to point out in this video, you could save a ton of money and headache later down the road. Today, we will be discussing everything you need to know about condos. Specifically, we'll be talking about what a condo is, where condo fees come from, and special assessments, what they typically include, something to be aware of with parking, short-term rentals, and the common bylaws. So what is a condo? A condo, short for condominium, is a type of real estate property where an individual owns their living space, but they also share ownership of common areas such as hallways, elevators, and recreational facilities. And condos can be in the form of apartments, townhomes, or even single family houses. But the defining feature is the shared ownership of common areas. So where do condo fees come from? Condo fees, also known as maintenance fees or strata fees, are the fees that condo owners pay to cover the costs of maintaining the shared common areas. Condo fees comes from what's called the reserve fund study, which is required by law in the Condominium Act every five years. So what is a reserve fund study? Every five years, an engineering company comes and does an assessment to look at everything. The paint, lobby, common areas, boiler systems, windows, etc. They'll come and tell the condo board the life expectancy of everything and estimate the cost, and they do adjust for inflation. Once they know the cost and life expectancy for everything in the building, they will come up with a projection, and then the reverse engineer that number to come up with the condo fee. The condo fee money should cover all of that. This is why it's super important to get the condo documents reviewed by an expert when purchasing a condo. You can see the reserve fund study, what amount of money they actually have, and if the money is being properly managed. If you buy somewhere that doesn't manage its money properly, you have a higher chance of a special assessment. The corporation or the board has the power to initiate a special assessment to raise money in the event of an emergency, budget shortfall, or the financial needs. The corporation has the legal right to foreclose on a unit for unpaid condo fees and assessments, which once again, this is why it's so important to get your condo documents reviewed by an expert. And it also just goes to show you that lower condo fees aren't always better. We need to get the full picture. What do condo fees typically include? Condo fees typically cover a variety of expenses, including maintenance and repairs to common areas, as we just talked about, snow removal, landscaping, cleaning services, security, and building insurance. The fees also typically include the costs of the utilities, except for electricity. Parking. Did you know there's two types of parking when buying a condo? There is titled parking and assigned parking. When it's titled, that means that you own it. You pay property tax for that parking, but it's yours. When it's assigned parking, that means you don't own it. You don't have to pay property tax, However, if the condo board votes on it, they can reassign the spot to someone else. This is something a lot of people don't know that you should be aware of, and that is also why units sell for much more when they have titled parking. So if something looks super similar, it might be that small difference. There's a lot of value for a parking spot. Short-term rentals. This is for the investors or people that need a mortgage helper. Short-term rentals, such as those offered on Airbnb, have become increasingly popular in recent years. However, not all condos allow short-term rentals, and short-term rentals are defined as anything less than 30 days. Most condo buildings do not allow them, especially in downtown, so you need to confirm with the corporation if this is allowed. Common bylaws. So every condo has a set of rules and regulations that govern how the building operates. These rules are known as bylaws and are established by the condo board and can cover a wide range of topics such as noise levels, pet ownership, smoking, and more. It's important to review the bylaws before purchasing a condo to ensure that they align with your lifestyle and needs. Here are some bylaws that are very common amongst all condos. 90% will have these. Pets. You're usually allowed with permission of the board. Bylaws usually have a maximum of 15 kilograms for the dogs, but it may be bigger with board approval. Window coverings. Usually it must be white on the outside. Parkade stall. You're not normally allowed to have any belongings in your parkade stall, which means like winter tires, storage items, etc. Renovations. So cosmetic renovations don't need board approval except for flooring. You may be asked to upgrade the soundproofing if you are replacing the floor, however. Windows and doors are usually the responsibility of the board. The balcony is actually the responsibility of the board. That's technically a common area. However, you're the only one that can typically access it. And owners cannot make any structural, mechanical, or electrical alterations to the unit without the written approval by the board. I hope this information was super helpful to you guys. If you want a list of condo buildings in downtown Calgary that I think are good and some that I would avoid, be sure to shoot me an email at zach at liveinnercity.com and also be sure to drop a comment if you have any other questions about moving to Calgary or buying real estate in Calgary. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Take care.